retro Christmas decorations. These are such a fun project to do, so easy, but really impactful. This is basically what it creates, is that beautiful honeycomb look that we remember from childhood Christmas decorations and things like that. Now this is a half one, but obviously being a template, you can make them full full size, all the way around three dimensional. And we actually have the templates in two different sizes. This is the sort of um, standard size, so to speak. This has eight templates in four, the four designs, but in two different sizes. Then we also do a set that does the four shapes, but in the much bigger, the A4 size, which just, they look spectacular when they're done. Um, so this is what the templates look like. You've got these sort of half templates with these markings on, and this is the so this is the middle size one. This is about a five in height. There's the small one that's a six, and I say, and then we also do the one that is the A4 size. And the reason we've got the half templates is because that's actually all you need. So it's meant that we can give you more more designs. So no point in doing a full template. It meant we could do a bauble and a tree instead of just one shape. So you've got in this one, you've got the eight templates. We're going to do the, the middle size bauble here. Um, I have been asked what weight of paper and things like that do you need? And actually, the thinner the paper, the better, because of this, the way you're making these, you want them to fold nice and, and flat, because this is the joy of them, is they fold flat, so after Christmas you can pat them away. But also, if you've got card that's got sort of a memory to it, and is quite thick, that's a lot of pressure you're putting on these folds and creases and things like that. So paper is a bit more malleable, so actually my favourite to do them out of is book pages. I say book pages, maps are beautiful as well because the, the joy with maps is they're single sided so you get this lovely contrast. But we're going to go with book pages because also book pages are a cheap um, resource because if you make friends with a local charity shop they will almost certainly happily pass you any books that can't be sold. So ones that have got damaged covers, maybe have writing on them and things like that. So you can just, for a donation to the charity, you know, take away their books that otherwise would end up in landfill. So I've put together multiple pages there so that I can cut out more than one shape at a time. The reason we do the half template and fold the paper first is because you saw it's a lot easier to fold a, a piece of paper, a rectangular piece of paper in half than it is to try and line up a bauble. And this is the most simple shape, the ornate ornament shape. You imagine trying to, once you've cut that out, fold it up um, in half. It's just folding it first just makes it more accurate it's not the right word but easy manageable and to do a full ornament you're going to want about 18 to 20 shapes so I've pre-cut this you'll be pleased to know and I will skip the video as well when I come to the gluing and all you want is them all pre-cut they're already folded in half so now you're ready to go I use a wet glue for this first things first make sure your glue's not gunked up and I tend to, if I've got a brand new glue that's full right to the top, I would actually splot some out onto my work surface and apply it from there because you don't actually need very much glue for this. So lay your template down, take your first shape, pop it in the template, open it up, and then you're going to put a tiny dot of glue at the B arrows. Notice how I'm coming in from the edge because I don't want any glue to splurt out. I just want it in line with that. Then you fold that over and you repeat, but this time with the A. And you see I'm using the nozzle to get a very small amount of glue. Okay, and then a line all the way down. Take your next shape, 
line it up on the top and this is why you use a wet glue and not glue dots because you can wiggle it around and you do B again B close it over and you do A take your next shape and you just carry on all the way through your pile of shapes A, B, A, B, A, B all the way through so B so quick way to remember B is on the inside A is on the outside B A and you just don't want too much glue so if you're using a really splodgy glue put some out on your mat and use either a paintbrush or um, a what you call it embossing tool just something that can put a little spot of glue A when you're on the A always remember to do that down the middle one separate because if you've cut them together open it up do B and you just keep going until you've finished them all so as you can see I've just been carrying on with my B's and my A's and I've got quite a nice little stack going on here so I'm just on my last one I lost count of how many I've done but quite a few so on the bees press it down do one more so line on the A A A with it open line it up B B B now obviously I don't need to do another A because I'm not starting the next section so there is my construction basically done do need to let the glue dry but while that's drying a little bit just try and be a bit patient I'm going to make the cover so to speak I find that um, it just makes them easier to open if they've got a solid cover on them also means that if you are wanting to have them so that they open and shut you've got something that you can join them back to back and get a nice finish and all I do when I'm joining them together like this is I have a little trusty pot of paper clips which then get out the way a bit of paper slide onto there holds it open they slip discreetly into the actual decoration and then you've got that full decoration once you've finished slide the paper clip off and it springs back and just by having those two solid sides to them it just makes them a little bit sturdier so all I do is I fold up a bit of card or paper or whatever I'm going to do and this time I line up my template on the open edge on this brown card this craft card it's not as obvious as to why you do this but if you were using a double-sided paper it just means that when you fold it and cut it this way you're going to get the two opposite sides of the shape so you're going to continue your pattern so I've then got two shapes which I can then glue fully to my construction flick it over glue round so that is basically my bauble done so give the glue a couple of minutes to dry depending what glue you're using 
and then you see you've got those ones that can come round hold that and you've got your fabulous decoration if you find that your glues splodged a little bit and you just need to tease some layers apart just gently take them one at a time but if you do the trick with tiny tiny amount of glue if you've got an old glue that's barely got anything in it's probably perfect but you've then got your fabulous decoration so that's the bauble you've got a bell shape you've got a christmas tree you've got a traditional ornament so you've got some really nice shapes to play with so that is your beautiful honeycomb this one exactly the same idea except I took red and green paper and alternated them when I was gluing them together. I wouldn't try that for your first one just because you, you want to make sure you're concentrating on put where you're putting your glue. But certainly after you've done a couple and you get into that nice rhythm, that is a lovely variation. So there you go, the honeycomb retro Christmas decorations.